Well, U.S. President Joe Biden's first trip north in his role as president will culminate with uh, next hour's address to Canada's parliament. His trip here coming, of course, at a time of global uncertainty for the economy, the financial system, not to mention geopolitical tensions stemming from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, deterior deteriorating relations with China. And we're seeing those challenges play out, of course, here at home, too. And we'll get that federal budget next week. Joining us to tee up this address now, Lisa Raitt, Vice Chair of Global Investment Banking at CIBC Capital Markets, former Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party. Lisa, it's always great to have you with us. And obviously now the world is watching this gathering in Ottawa today. Um, what's your assessment of the situation? What are you going to be watching for? Well, I've already watched for a couple of things. I mean, yes, the address from the president is going to be in incredibly important, very historic, and the words will be the message that he wishes to convey to Canadians. However, I think just as important are these bilaterals that are happening. First, the president met one-on-one -on -one with the prime minister. Then they went into a smaller room where they were able to bring in the secretary of state with our own global affairs minister and some staff members. And then finally, there's a larger gathering, which includes some other ministers at the table as well, as well as the secretary of energy from the United States. So what this all means to me is that the goals that the United States have in this visit are really about security measures about national security, and perhaps a little bit more about geopolitical events than they are necessarily about what's happening between our economies. No, a helpful point there. Uh, just to broaden things out, short term, you have clearly a uh, encouragingly strong relationship uh, and the ability to work together on some of those pressing issues like, let's say, for example, Ukraine. Uh, there are these yeah. longer term lingering issues, though, where tensions uh, have already been seen and, and, and may not uh, be front and center today but pipeline tensions, that Inflation Reduction mm. um, uh, Act in the United States, yeah. and, uh, and where this new North American uh, free trade deal goes. Um, what, 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 is, what is the longer-term challenge, would you say, versus perhaps what will be seen as some encouraging short-term developments today? I really think the long-term challenge is the long-term economies of our two countries, making sure that whatever the plan is, whatever the vision is for the United States, that they see themselves, which I believe is to be a green energy superpower in the country with supply chains rooted in North American shores, that Canada can play part of that, that we have a role to play, that they don't have to be as protectionist in the United States, that they seem to be with the recent uh, pieces of legislation that they've put forward. So opening the dialogue, having the Secretary of Energy, I think, is really important at the table. She is there. She's with other counterparts as well, because that is a very uh, pivotal piece. Transition from fossil fuel based to net zero economy is a challenge for the United States and for Canada. And we have to make sure we're working together and not at opposite purposes. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, the fact that you have the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Energy, and then obviously many uh, key players in the Trudeau government that have been there for these conversations. Uh, also, we will be um, awaiting uh, the two Michaels uh, who are attending yeah. a dinner later today, which gets us onto the subject of China, which is very complicated. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, there are very strong alliances between Canada and the U.S., but then there's just constant uh, confusion over uh, other matters. Um, you know, we were talking earlier today about how um, you had the TikTok CEO testifying in Washington. And of course, mm. leading into this gathering, you had the prime minister constantly answering questions around election meddling. What are you going to be watching on the China front? Well, I think what's happening at Congress right now with uh, the CEO of TikTok appearing yesterday and with continuing questions with respect to what are the powers associated with the with this platform and, and what information can Beijing actually glean from the users of TikTok. That's a really important issue for the United States. I'm sure they're bringing it up at the at the table. Um, I saw President Biden today to decline to answer any questions about how Mr. Trudeau is handling the questions of interference in our national elections. I think that was appropriate. He shouldn't be commenting on domestic issues within Canada. And as a result, I think we're back to where we've always been with respect to China, which is find the areas in which there can be cooperation, but uh, vehemently and, and in a necessity way, uh, defend the stuff that, that is important to you. And as I said at the top, John, it comes down to those energy supply chains. Clean energy supply chains is what the United States wants to bring back to the U.S. in order to bring those jobs in the Rust Belt back. Um, it is a big subject and, and will continue to be so. And, you know, we just 
covered the Ontario uh, budget as well, and obviously they were championing that big new electric uh, vehicle-related mm -hmm. manufacturing deal that they got from Europe, which, you know, obviously there will be some comp competition between Canada and the U.S. In, in, in the years ahead on that front. So a lot to watch for. You made a yeah. brief reference to banking. I mean, you do work with a bank today, and I yeah. think everybody is trying to figure out whether or not banking turmoil turns into something deeper than that. How important will the coordination be uh, between Canada and the U.S. be um, as we watch that unfold in the days ahead? I think that partnership has been strong. It will continue to be strong. The governors uh, always have had strong relationships with their counterparts in the United States, and I know that our Deputy Prime Minister has a strong relationship with her counterpart in the United States. And because of the, as you have noted many times, the rip the rapidity or it's how quickly this um, this happened is something that certainly would catch the eye of lawmakers because that is the concern. Something happening so quickly that it's it has no policy um, tool available in order to stop something that seems to be happening. So constant communication between the both countries uh, and on a world stage will be essential. And I think they'll build off the relationships they already have.